is uh, not just Christians are boring, but they're uh, these guys like all these uh, uh, preachers and stuff are fucking liars, lying through their teeth, like politicians. All the anecdotes about my my youngest son came home from school today. I want to tell this story, and he said, "Father, I have a friend who blah 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 blah." It's all bullshit. It's all lies. <laughs> So, and this is a, a, a great example of a lie. And, and you know these guys are preaching to, you know, tens of thousands of people. And this is from a chapter called Five Secrets of a Happy Marriage. And I read it, and you know what? Fucking's not one of them. Interestingly enough. So, all right, let me read this great, wonderful Christian lie to you. Jim and Suzette Bronner live in a small town in Missouri and have three children. Jason, who's 19 at the time of this writing, a national swimming champion and a freshman in college. Travis, their 17-year-old son, who's an outstanding three-sport athlete in high school. And Jill, their beautiful and talented 13-year-old. Okay, that's all right. That's pretty normal. Um, Jim and Suzette are in their early 40s, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he has worked hard to build a strong marriage and to, to, to raise with Suzette three emotionally healthy children. Now recently, Jason came home for the first time from college. He was unusually nervous because as part of his initiation into the swim team, he had been coerced into wearing an earring. <laughs> None of the men in his family had ever worn an earring. And it just wasn't done among their circle of friends. And Jason felt the roof might come off when mom and dad saw him. Can we get the uh, monitors lowered a little? Uh, Jason pulled into the driveway and found his mom. She was so excited to see him that she gave him a big hug before she noticed his ear and gasped. Then she laughed. What a great joke, she said. I assume it's one of those stick-on kinds. No, Mom. This is the real thing, Jason answered. I had my ear pierced. Everybody in the swim team has an earring, and I was the only one who didn't, so I gave in. Suzette became nervous, not because she was upset with her son, but because she wondered how her husband would react when he got home. After taking Jason's laundry and getting him something to drink, <laughs> She called two friends. Then, while Jim was still at work, she made a trip to the home of one of those friends and discussed how she should handle the situation. Both Jason and his mother were anxious as Jim arrived home. When he walked in the door, Jason said, Hi, Dad, I'm home for the weekend. Jim immediately hugged his son on the side opposite the earring. Then said, Well, how's college going? He hadn't noticed, and Jason just kept waiting for the explosion. Finally, Dad saw it. Hey, what's this, he said. Jason thought, oh no, he's going to rip it off my ear. <laughs> Suzette gently suggested, now don't overreact. But Jim didn't react at all, calmly and sensitively, which as I understand are reactions. <laughs> um, but let me get back. Uh, Calmly and sensitively, he asked, What's going on? Jason answered, Dad, everybody on the swim team has an earring, and I knew you'd be upset, but Dad was the only guy who didn't have one. The senior said either I do it or, you know, I'm in trouble. If you want to wear the earring, that's your business, Jim answered. It's not up to me. Only God knows how much I love you. <laughs> only God knows how much I love you. I have no idea, personally. I might hate you. I don't know. I have prayed to him to give me some sign. Do I love my son or do I loathe him? He will not answer. Right. Personally, I wouldn't wear an earring, but hey, I understand the pressure you're getting. Suzette calmed down immediately. I thought you were going to be mad, she told Jim. No, no. We need to support our son, he said. Actually, I'd like to do something about it, but I don't think anything would help. It's a lie. <laughs> oh, also, here's the 
here's an observation. Aren't, um, aren't earrings removable? Yeah, fuck you! <laughs> Save it, save it. All right, this is the last one, and then I'm gonna leave. All right, here we go. This is the ultimate lie. This is my favorite. Uh, if you wanna keep the music going, that's up to you. Uh, total lie, total lie. Several years ago, a pastor in Denver told his congregation the following true story. See, now you know it's a lie. <laughs> A lady from his church was flying back to Denver, and as the meal was served, she noticed the woman sitting next to her did not take a meal. To make conversation, the Christian woman asked, Are you on a diet? Pretty standard icebreaker stuff, right? Ladies, am I right? That's like on a long trip on a flight, that's pretty much how you want to start. Hey, tell me you're going to finish that cake? Or is that for... Come on. That didn't... All right. So it's already bullshit. Okay. Are you want to die? Okay. No, came the reply. I am a member of the Church of Satan, and we are fasting for the destruction of the families of pastors and Christian leaders. And there's no more, there's no rest of the story? Come on. That is fucking bullshit. Unless that person was me, and it wasn't. That did not happen. You know, unless that person was super fucking cool and just like, uh, hadn't noticed the woman, like, are you on a diet? Uh, yes, I... Oh, and then she notices the kind of bedazzled sweater with the angel pin and the fucking... You know, AIDS ribbon, whatever the fuck, that dangling from her, the bad frosted tips and everything. And then, uh, yeah, no. Actually, I'm, uh, Satan. Church of Satan, and, uh, yeah. Bunch of bullshit. All right, thank you very much.